Seated at the heart of Nairobi in one of Nairobi's most bustling malls, the Sarit Center is a unique concept restaurant that is eclectic in style. The library is uh, a high-end uh, cafeteria where we serve uh, various kinds of cuisines uh, that include Thai, uh, Fusion Indian, Continental. Uh, we also serve uh, various teas from across the world. Uh, we are very famous for our coffees. And coupled with that, uh, we have good books that somebody could, uh, you know, stand by, read, spend some time. The library is one of a kind concept, a restaurant and a library all under one roof. The restaurant is truly a bookworm's dream. We are very popularly known for the Kizomba night as well, which is on Fridays. And we have a good uh, you know, uh, niche for the Kizomba, where we have good clients coming in, spending their time with music, dancing, and enjoying drinks later in the evening. We also do specialize in uh, wines and whiskies. Uh, for our clientele that enjoy that kind of, you know, drinks. This is the first of its kind in Nairobi. Uh, the, 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 the concept actually was founded by my co-founder, who is Rajiv, and uh, he did realize that there was no space uh, for teas, coffees, spending some time with books, and, uh, you know, having a, a fine cuisine, but with various uh, niches in terms of you have Thai, you've got Indian, you've got Continental. Uh, in addition to that, what he realized was the location as well was missing. So you would find a lot of coffee areas uh, that serve just one or two needs, which is coffee or, you know, your fast foods. But bringing all this together was actually his idea and we, we, we sort of conceptualized it. Well, it's taken us six to eight months to bring it uh, to, to on board. If you look at the digital era that we are in, everyone is focusing on their mobile phones. Uh, that being one. Uh, secondly, being a cost constraint. Obviously, for you to set up a library with books, you need to create space. That space is, is, is costly. So people end up looking at the cost, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the output in terms of revenue. Uh, having said that, for us, it's, it's not just the costing bit, but we want to give our clients an experience. So it's not just about the money involved. So we'd like clients to come in, different age groups. We've got young boys and girls who love to come here. We've got couples, we've got uh, business meetings held here. So we'd like everyone to get an experience, uh, not just with our food, music, drinks, but also with the books. And that's eventually what we're looking at and creating that story uh, that we used to have back in the day and trying to revive it, uh, you know, in today's time. This bookworm haven has a quiet space and pods for you to enjoy your favorite book in silence. We've never drawn uh, this from anywhere in the country or anywhere in other parts of the world. It was literally uh, you know, virgin concept that just came to us and we decided to take on it and see how it materializes. With its unique decor, inspired by beautiful geometric shapes that look like pods, this unique architecture and design make one feel like they have been transported to a whole new city. We wanted it to be very vibrant. So the moment somebody walks into the place, they realize that, like I said, experience. Experience that they're into a different world you know, experience colors, experience vibrancy. Uh, secondly, the creation of the pods, where you could come in and have the pod to yourself or with your friend. Uh, privacy was key. As you can see, the pods are unique, independent, and uh, you know, you can spend enough time with yourself or with your friends without being disturbed whilst reading a book or having good food. Uh, and when we were discussing on the pods, we realized that we'd like to create a unique feature and a unique characteristic. And that's why we have these shapes that we currently have. And uh, I guess, so slowly and slowly, as in how we thought about the pods, we thought about the library, we thought about the, the cuisine and the dining, we said, you know, let's, let's play an experiment. 
and it did take us two to three months to come up with the right product. Most of the items are locally sourced, yes. Uh, maybe 10 or 15% would have been overseas. Well, one, if you realize we opened during a COVID era, so obviously logistics was an issue. And secondly, uh, most of the concepts that we, we conceptualized, uh, materials were available locally, so we'd rather give the local artisans the benefit and you know share business within the local fraternity. And that's the, the, the culture we wanted to to encompass within the library, such that when you come in, you're comfortable, you know, you don't want to, you, you want to spend enough time to yourself or with your friends, and you know, just, just let the world be. So this is a new offer we brought into place where somebody could book an entire pod for the whole day for 1,500 shillings, and we would serve that person unlimited teas and coffees to spend their time either working or reading books, or you know, doing a project, uh, just to ensure that people come in and do what they have to do, uh, at the same time making it cost effective. It's been joining the dots, literally. It's, it was never thought through that it will be an all-in-one facility, to be honest. We started it as a library. Uh, we saw that the location was good, so we put up music and dance. And so we've been joining the dots and we've been progressing. As we speak, we're currently looking at more things we can bring on board. So, you know, as and how we, we grow and we, we, we meet the needs of the people and we listen to the expectations, we'll always keep improving. For those looking for a change of scenery for their work from home routine, this is the place for you. The library is also a full bar and exhaustive continental menu to cater to your variety of taste buds from breakfast to barbecue. So we have proper food. Uh, so, uh, you know, you could have your starters and your soups and your salads. But in addition to that, we have proper main foods. Uh, you know, so somebody who is coming just for a light lunch or a breakfast, uh, you know, we serve their purpose. Somebody who is pretty hungry and a group coming, uh, you know, looking for proper food, be it, you know, local, uh, Indian, European, Thai, we, we serve it all, we serve it all, yeah. So we have, uh, you know, teas from various parts of the Middle East, Southeast Asia. Uh, we, we've got uh, coffees ranging from, you know, different parts of the world. Uh, to mention our cooler chai, a cooler chai being served in a clay pot. You know, we, so you need to come here, experiment the various kinds of teas that we serve, uh, as well as the coffees, as well as also try all the various cuisines that we have to offer and we can confirm and you know assure you that you'll not go wrong. So all we've been doing is, is, is marketing digitally through our Insta pages and our Facebook uh, pages and how Kizomba came about was we, we were looking to, to, to sort of you know on, on weekends when people are coming and unwinding they're looking for good music you know want to shake off the stress of the week so they'd like to dance to some good music enjoy a couple of drinks. And we said, why not try it at the library? We have a decent uh, space for, you know, for a dance floor. And we, we said, let's try it out. And you know, uh, uh, true to our experience and our expectation, it was a big hit. And we have been improving on that. And uh, you know, week on week, it's been growing on us. And we look forward to, to attracting more and more. So when we were designing the menu, we kept that very much in mind, that we should not have meals that would exceed seven to 10 minutes in terms of you know, cooking and serving the client. Because any client coming for food expects food to be served in a maximum of 10 minutes. So we kept that very much in mind whilst we're drawing up the menu. So it was an intentional effort to put those foods into the menu, taking into account taste, cuisine, as well as the preparation time. Yeah. In terms of the staff, yes, we have an excellent team, and I think that's what also serves uh, to the success of library. Uh, our pricing is also cost effective. We are not very high. Uh, value for money is key for us, such that when people come, they need to see that it's very friendly to the pocket. In terms of competition, yes, we do have competition, but it's not like to like. You couldn't say it's apple to apple. So we welcome competition, it's constructive for us, and it'll help us you know, uh, 
sort of perfect things that we still need to perfect on. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, every restaurant in Nairobi is serving a different niche. If you have something different to offer, people will come and experiment and continue coming if you're good at it. So, and that's the way we look at it. This will be a perfect place for quiet solitude as well as socializing with friends and family. It's the best of both worlds. The library, of course, it's a good place to come and work and sit the whole day just for a coffee, quick food. We do a, a mix of food, a little continental, and also some uh, Asian dishes, and we do nice pizza and pasta as well. From a food point of view, I think we try to cater to most needs. We have good vegetarian dishes, we have nice bowls we will do later, where you can come for lunch and have a bowl, either it's with tofu or with chicken, and stuff like that. And we try and have a little bit mix of everything and also good kids menu. Most people there's fast food, stuff like that, but we, are, we have a little bit more of a variety and fresh produce. And everything on the menu starts with the fresh produce and we go from there. Like I, I, I order, order food daily. Like the products only daily, so we don't keep anything in the freezer, etc. There's a lot of options. I mean, there's of course starters, which is both vegetarian and meat options. Then we have lunch, we have the bowls, this comes out of a rice and couscous and then you, there's a lamb one, there's a chicken one and there's also two different kinds with tofu. We have a few pizzas, we do Napolitan style which means the bread, the dough, we ferment it. So it's that little bit, it's not completely flat, it has a little bit of a crust and a little sour tang to the dough. And then we do fresh pastas as well, plus main courses, we have roast chicken, we have slow cooked lamb, etc. It's, it's been good. I mean, it's been a challenging two years for everyone, you know. We had to close down, we had to open, we have to make standards different because of the whole pandemic, which I think we have adapted to and it's, it's been good. Now the weather is start being nice again, so people should know we are also on the rooftop, so there is outside sitting where you can enjoy the sun. We will be doing two dishes for you today. We have lamb chops, this is this which have been slowly cooked for marinated overnight and then I have slow cooked them for in a pressure cooker for an hour or so so the meat is very soft falling off and we will also be doing a tofu bowl fresh tofu here I will cut up, I will fry it and then we will mix it in so what we will start doing over here we have our lamb chops I will get them into the sauce the, the lamb chops was marinated in Ras Halanut which is like a East, uh, North African spice uh, marinated garlic ginger, then cooked overnight. Then that, the sauce is made in. We make it into a big sauce where we add some raisins and some garlic. So I'm heating them up in here again. Then we will serve it with potatoes and courgettes and a sauce called tzatziki. Tzatziki is yogurt, garlic and cucumber. At the same time, we will start tofu bowl here. Raisin goes in the lamb. Oil in a pan, very hot, is for the tofu bowl. Spring onions. Garlic. Nice and hot. Mushroom, salt, pepper. Seasoning for the mushrooms. Then we have fresh, fresh sugar snap. Fresh sugar snap. Hot chili. So try and add. We are trying to add as many vegetables as possible inside. Lamb chops are cooking to be ready. The fire is up. Sweet corn, tofu, 
and the tofu. Then we're gonna put oyster sauce. And soy sauce for the flavors. At the same time, Chops are ready here. Gonna cook a fried egg for, for the tofu bowl. And at the same time, we have made rice here, stir fried rice with uh, garlic, ginger, and spring onion. Of course, people can order the, the egg the way they like. Uh, this one I will cook sunny side up because I think that's the best way of eating the egg. But if you want well done, of course we give you well done. Ready to serve. We're just gonna add some potatoes. You will plate this one over there, Joseph, when I tell you. Give me stuff. Get some butter in there. So that will be the side dish we will serve there. First, here we will start making tofu bowl. Fried rice in our granite bowl, the tofu mix, lettuce, bit of chili, optional, but I like a bit of chili in there, and our fried egg. Lamb chops in, those are grilled crochets. Sizzling hot sauce and cucumber and yogurt. Tzatziki it's called to serve with. And it, it's served to the guests very hot and nice like that. On the side, we have the rosemary potatoes. Bit of coriander there. With a side of rosemary potatoes. Bon appetit. Today I would like to prepare for you a botanical refresher. It's a gin based cocktail. It has a gin infused with the alcohol tea. It has orange juice. It has a rosemary, fresh rosemary. It also has a honey syrup, which makes it very perfect. I'll squeeze my orange juice. First of all, I'll make sure that I have my oranges ready. Here we go, our orange juice is ready. I'll take my shaker. Just 30 ml of orange juice, freshly squeezed. As you can see, there are very fresh fruits. 30 ml of orange juice. That's enough. Then add uh, 30 ml of lemon juice. That's a meal of hand syrup. You boil our own syrup. Slowly do. Then I'll take one strand of rosemary up for refreshment that brings a nice aroma. What's inside? 
also make sure to leave one for garnishing. Then next, I add 60 ml. That is a double shot of the infused gin. After that, I add my ice cubes for shaking. I fill the shaker with ice. Also fill the glass with ice. Always make sure that they are fresh ice and very clean for good customer consumption. After I fill my glass with ice, I fill my shaker with ice. I shake well to make sure that I get the enough heat in it. As I shake, I make sure that I maintain the Different mixed up. After shaking, I double strain my drink to make sure that there are no residues in the drinks. So I double strain. Standard quantity of my drink. Then I top up with a tonic soda to bring that flavor balance. Just a dash of tonic soda. Also, I top up with a dash of white wine. Just a dash of white wine. Put my garnish. Close my Also a slice of orange to complement the ingredients. Before dispatching the drink, I also test to make sure that the, everything is balanced and it's on standard. My drink is okay. <laughs> then I can pour it to customer. Cheers.